Whenever we do anything in the admin panel, whether that be create, edit, or delete a user, that is all working, but it provides no feedback to the end user. So they don't know whether it has actually worked or not. So for example, let's just take this first user here and I'm just going to hit delete on them. And you can see that actually deletes the user. So that is all working, but the admin who's doing that delete operation has no feedback to know whether, yeah, it did work or it didn't. So now let's build a notification system so we can push notifications back to the admins. So over in our project under resources views, I'm going to create a new folder here called partials. And then inside of partials, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this alerts.blade.php. And then in this file, this is where I'm going to check for the presence of an alert and then display it out. So firstly, I want to check. So I want to say in the session, there is a key of success. And then I'll just close this if off here. And if there is, I want to show an alert back to the user. Now, because I'm using Bootstrap in this series, I'm going to be using the Bootstrap alert component to display this message back. So I'm just coming over to the Bootstrap documentation here, and I'm just going to come down and I'm going to grab the alert with like, success. Now I'm just going to paste that into the if. And then inside of here, we just want to open up our blade syntax. And then I just want to print out what is in that session. So session success and i'll just print out that message now we need to include this into our admin panel views so if you open up our main blade view which is under views templates main.blade.php and i'm just going to include it here for now so i might move this later on in the series when we actually play around with the layout of the admin panel but for now this will be perfect for us so i'm going to do a include and i want to include that partials dot alerts dot blade dot php file that we just created so now that will include that include at the top of every view that inherits from this main dot blade dot php file and then it'll check if a status has been set in the session and if it has it'll display it out so let's now add this to our delete method first so in our user controller under our app http controllers admin user controller we're going to come down to our destroy method and then inside this method we need to pass in the request object so that we can set a flash message on the session so as a second parameter here we're going to type in this as request and we're going to give it the variable of request and don't forget if you haven't already or your ide hasn't done it for you you need to make sure you bring in this request if you head up to the top of the file, you can see here I've got it use illuminate HTTP request. And then inside of here, we can just use that request object. And we can call the session method that is on there and we can say flash. And then we just give this a key value pair. So I'm going to call this one success as that's the one that we're looking for at the moment. And then let's just give this a message of you have deleted the user. So this will add this message into the session. And it'll just do it the one time and then when the page is refreshed that session variable is deleted and that's all done automatically for you so you don't have to worry about that so now let's head over to the browser and just try this i'm just going to refresh the page to make sure that include is included in and then i'm just going to click delete on this top user here and you can see now it says you have deleted the user now if we give this page a refresh you can see that notification has gone. So it's flashed to the session once and then it's deleted. So that message won't keep showing. It's only going to show that one time. So now we can do this for the edit and create as well. So I'm just going to copy this line here and I'm going to paste it in our edit. And instead of deleted, I'm going to say you have edited the user. And then for our store method, I'm going to paste it in again here. I'm going to say you have created the user. But now that will give success flash messages for everywhere that we need them. So we're not actually passing back any kind of errors at the moment because on the update method, we're doing a find or fail. So that is just returning an error response code instead of a message to a user. So you could actually change that if you wanted and do a find and then check if the user model contains a user. And if it doesn't, then you can set a flash message of fail, for example, or error and then pass that down. So let me just give you an example of this, how that would work. 
So over in our works.blade.php file, if we just copy down this success one, and then let's say instead error, then change this also to error. And then instead of alert success, we want to say alert danger. And that just gives us a red styling rather than a green one. So now our alerts are going to check whether there's an error key being flashed to the session. So back over in our user controller here, and then we just want to check that variable. So what we want to say is say if not user, and we can just copy this flash here. So if there is no user, we can say error. And then we can just say you cannot edit this user. And then what we want to do is then just return the redirect back. So let's just try this out in the browser. So I'm just going to edit user 10 here. And then I'm just going to right click and inspect. And you can see here in the action, we're posting to admin users 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change that to the number 11 because we haven't got a user with that ID within our database. And then we're just going to click on submit of this form. And you can see it gets redirected back and it's saying you cannot edit this user. And that's because that user didn't exist. So instead of just dumping out and returning a status error code, we're actually giving the end user a little bit more information. Now, this is up to you whether you want to do this or not, because some people can argue saying if the person that's trying to submit this form is trying to do something dodgy, like passing in incorrect IDs, then it might just be better just, just to completely die out on them and send them the error status code rather than giving them a nice error message. So I'll leave that up to you, but I'm just doing this as an example to show you how you can pass down different types of status messages and then give them the correct styling. So obviously, if you wanted to maybe do a warning status, then you can just set a session variable of warning. And then in your alerts.blade.php file, just check for that warning and give the styling for the warning message. So a final thing I want to do in this video is add some form validation. At the moment, we don't have any kind of validation on our form. So let's go into our create here and then let's just submit on this form with it being empty. And we'll get an error saying that we need to fill in the name column. And we'll also have to fill in the email and password columns as well, but it's just failed on the first one it's found. And this is because we're not validating any of the data coming in to the application before trying to submit it to the database. So let's just do that now. So still in our users controller, let's go up to our store method. In case you're wondering what's happened there, I've accidentally deleted this at the start of the video. So your code will probably look more like this. You'll be syncing the roles, obviously, and then returning the redirect. So I'm just going to pop this, um, this request down underneath the creation of the user, as that makes the most sense. So in here now, before we actually create this user, we want to validate the data that's being passed in. So let's do that now. So we'll create a new variable here called validated data. I'm going to set this to an array and I'm going to say the request, the incoming request, I want to validate. And then in here, we can just pass in an array of the rules for each of the columns. So let's open up a new array here. And I'm just going to break this down to a new line so it's easy to read. And then we can pass in the names of each of our fields that we want to validate. So we can say on the name field, and there's two ways of doing this. You can pass in a string where each of the rules are piped or you can pass it in an array. I'm going to do the pipe method here. So I'm going to pass it a string. And I'm going to say this field is required. And then we just give it a pipe for the next rule. And I'm going to say the max length of this field is going to be 255 characters. And then let's do the same again for our email. And then I'm just going to copy this down because these, because I want these to be the same here. I want it to be required and be a max of 255. And then also, I want to make sure that it's unique, that we don't currently have it in the database. So let's just give another pipe here. And then I can say, I want it to be unique. And I want it to be unique in the users table. So this just lets Laravel know, check that users table and make sure that this email doesn't already exist. And then finally, let's do a bit of validation on the password field. And again, I'm going to say I want it to be required. And I'm going to say I want the minimum length of this to be eight characters long. And I want the maximum length of this to be also 255. Now, there are arguments that you shouldn't limit the length of a user's password. 
but I think 255 characters long is enough. And this prevents somebody from just pasting in a very large amount of text and posting it to the server and then the server try and hash all of that text. It'll bring the server to its knees as it tries to process it. So for me personally, it's a good practice to put a limit on it, but not a small limit. So something like 20 characters, for example. If we set the max to 255, that prevents somebody from trying to dump too much text in it, but it doesn't limit users from using a more complex password of their choice. Okay, so now we have that. Let's just close that off with a semicolon. And then in here where we create, instead of getting a request, what we can do now is just pass in that validated data. So let's go back over to our form and test this out. So I'm just going to go back to the form. And then this time I'm going to hit submit again on this empty form. And you see that brings back the validation error messages. And if you remember correctly, when we created this form, we put in the code to show out these validation messages. So you can see here it's saying the name field is required, the email field required, and a password field is required. So let's just fill in some dummy data here. And then for the password, I'm just going to type in pass. So this will not pass the validation because it needs to be a minimum of eight characters long. I'm just going to say create this as a user. It doesn't really matter too much. And then I'm just going to hit submit. And you can see it returns us back to the form and it doesn't pass our minimum character validation. So it's saying the password must be at least eight characters long. So now we know our validation is working. So this does work and it works quite well. And the rules aren't too long because there's only three inputs on this form. But imagine if it was a large form of 20, then it would take up a lot of space on your controller. So what we can do is, is create a dedicated form request validation for our user controller. So over in your terminal in the root of the project, we can do a PHP artisan make colon request. And then we can just give this request the name. So I'm going to call this one store user request. And then we just hit enter to run that. You can see there now that has successfully created the request for us. So over in our project, if we come under app, HTTP, and we can see we have a new folder here now called requests. And we have our new request in there called store user request. Let's just open this up. And then if we can scroll down here, we can see it returns an array of rules. So what we want to do is over in our user controller, let's just grab our rules here. I'm just going to cut these. And then I'm going to paste them into here. So now our rules are in our store user request. We can now call this store user request from anywhere and it always use these rules. So they're only in one place and we can use them multiple times. So now instead of passing in the request, we can actually pass in our store user request. So if I just change this here now to store user request. And now my IDE would have pulled this in up at the top for me. But if yours hasn't, make, make sure you come up at the top and use it. So it's use app HTTP requests store user request. Now we're injecting that in. We still have access to all the normal request object stuff. And then that allows us to call validate on our store user request. So if we just leave this variable here, and if we just take out the array, and then instead of validate, we want to call validated. And then what that'll do is that'll call our store user request validation and check the rules are inside there. Now this one line here replaces everything that we previously had, and we can also use it. One final thing we need to do though, over our store user request is just turn off the authorization for now. So in the top method here, authorize, we want to change this from false to true. And this just allows our request through until we set up the authorization. So let's just try this out in the browser now before we apply it to the edit. So back over in our browser, I'm just going to submit an empty form again. And you can see that redirects us back just exactly as it did before with the validation error messages. Only this time it's doing it through our newly created, our store user request. So now we have that store user request. We can actually use that anywhere in our application where we create a new user. That means the validation will always be the same whenever we create a new user, no matter where we do it from in the application. So say if you had another section where certain types of users could also create other users, and you had a separate form for this that wasn't in the admin panel, you can make sure that you validate the request exactly the same way. 
and you don't have to copy and paste the same rules into each of those methods. So, so far in our application, we've not actually locked anything down. So any user to the application can pretty much do whatever they want. They don't even need to be logged in at the current moment. So in the next video, let's look at how we can start locking this application down. We're going to make sure that firstly, the users are logged in. And then secondly, we're going to create up some methods to make sure the user has the correct role before they can access any of our admin pages.